Why does your family hate you? Um, I'm going to do a very important video here relating to the end times, and I thought I'd do it up here on top of uh, Sugarloaf Mountain, northern Maine. You see the beautiful lake way back there behind me, and another one here over this way. Very beautiful spot. And uh, I chose to do the video out here. Hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad. I apologize if it is. But uh, I chose to do the video out here because of the isolation of this. Um, myself, my wife, my son, and my dog are the only ones out here right now. Nobody else around for many miles in uh, all directions. And um, sometimes you feel like that. Maybe you can't come out to a beautiful place like this, but a lot of times you might feel like you're all alone even though there's family around and whatever else. And uh, there's a lot of people that are having problems right now with family and, and even with friends and things. And uh, why is that? Well, I'm going to read for you from Scripture here what Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, what he had to say about it. Um, see if I can get this like this. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Wax cold, what does that mean? Cold wax, you know, no, it, what it means is it gets worse. Uh, waxing worse and worse. Uh, the Bible says that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Things get worse in the end times. We are in the end times. There's no question about that. And according to the words of Jesus Christ, he taught that your family, your relations, um, the love of many shall wax cold. People are going to be very cold to you. People that were once uh, very loving and very warm, uh, they're now cold. And you don't get along with people anymore. And you go out and you try to do, go do things with your friends and, and uh, it's not the same. And people don't get along as much as they once did and, and uh, it's a shame. And you say, what's this thing about iniquity? Well, iniquity is the Bible word. Another way to say it would be sin. Um, there's a lot of sin right now in the world. And uh, you say, oh, come on, you roll your eyes. Oh, yeah, he's just going to preach against sins and whatever. Well, you have to understand that bad things that happen to you uh, from other people, um, those are sins. You're not supposed to uh, steal. You're not supposed to you know, kill and and lust and things like that and there are people that will do that and it'll it will affect you unfortunately you say why would a loving God allow that um, because he gives all men free will but you see the the same loving God that gives men free will that loving God can also save you and he can um, give you a a life where you'll be able to understand this world better you can there are beautiful places like this out here but then there are places that are not very beautiful, <laughs> not beautiful at all. And you know what? You can understand it if you're saved. When the Holy Spirit of God moves into you, when you get saved, that's my dog barking back there. When you get genuinely born again, then um, you'll understand some things. And you'll understand that you come out here and you see the beauty and you say, there is a God. This didn't all just happen by random chance. There's no way. Um, there is a God, and He made all of this. And if the Bible's right, then the Bible says that He came down, took on the form of a man as the Lord Jesus Christ, and He lived here for 33 and a half years, and He offered the truth to people, and they hated Him for it, and they killed Him. You see... You can relate to Jesus Christ if you're having a hard time. If people treat you poorly, you can relate to Jesus. Um, God manifest in the flesh was not a popular man. He was not loved by everybody and everybody just wanted to be around him and whatever else. There were times when he would heal people and people would want to be around him then. But uh, then he'd start preaching about sin and they would leave. <laughs> they didn't like him then. And uh, you might not realize it, but I can almost guarantee you that at some point in time, you have probably said some things against people's sin and against people's iniquity, and you've upset them and made them mad, and then they don't want to be around you anymore. You know, it's no, nobody likes having a friend that lies to them. 
Um, nobody likes having a friend that steals from them. Uh, that's a very hurtful thing. And if it's family, it's even worse. And you say, I don't understand why they would do that to me. I don't understand why it just seems like they don't even care about me. And, um, I mean, there's, you know, you know what I'm talking about. If you're struggling with this issue, I don't need to tell you and explain it all to you. You, you understand. Um, I'll turn to another place here in Matthew chapter 10. I'm going to have to fold this thing up and get to my Bible here. If you can excuse me for just a minute. Matthew chapter 10, I'll show you something very shocking that you will not hear preached in many churches. Um, they avoid this stuff because churches are all about life enhancement so that they can get your money. That's what they're about. Um, Matthew chapter 10, verse uh, 34. Jesus Christ speaking here, recording the words of Jesus Christ. And it says, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Um, one of the most amazing truths that there is, is that uh, when you truly are wanting to understand the truth and you want to stand for things that are right, um, you'll get a lot of enemies. And unfortunately, a lot of times they're your own family members. Pretty bad. But um, when you try to find your life, when you try to get along with people and things, you actually lose it. You'll have to compromise and go along with things that you disagree with, things that go against your conscience. You say, hey, I know that this is wrong. And maybe you won't say, maybe you know, it's wrong because the Bible said so. You don't know why it's wrong. You just feel this is wrong. I don't know why these people treat me this way. I don't know why people are lying about me and all these other things. All you know is this is wrong and I can't have a part in this. I don't want to be part of this. And um, I can tell you right now, the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. The Holy Spirit will start to draw you towards himself. And um, if right now you're having problems and you can't get along with your family, um, and you're starting to really want to know truth, and every time you try to talk about truth with your family, they get mad. They say, let's just change the subject. It's so negative and whatever else. Um, God is trying to get your attention. You don't have to come out here to find God. You don't have to go to some church building. Please don't go to one of those. Uh, there, there's no church buildings in the, in the New Testament. Um, you don't have to go to some place like that. You can meet God right where you're at. Um, and if you say, well, what about you, Brian? Uh, you're a preacher and everything else, and I'm, you probably get along with your entire family, and, and uh, everything's just great, and uh, they just love you and respect you, and you're a world-renowned preacher or whatever. Is that the case? No. Um, <clears throat> my nearest relative right now is about 18 hour drive away from here, uh, multiple states away. And I have uh, relatives that are across the country. Uh, one lives in Alaska. Um, one lives in uh, Minnesota, I think. One lives in West Virginia. One lives down in Pennsylvania. He'd be the closest one. And um, my mother lives in West Virginia now too. Born and raised in Pennsylvania, but uh, we don't really get along that well. And uh, the nephews and nieces that used to love me and adore me before I was a saved man, uh, now they don't even, I don't even exist to them. Uh, you see, years ago I was a pretty neat guy. It was fun. I was, you know, people liked being around me. I liked to watch the Hollywood movies and, and uh, you know, I was like to play video games and, and uh, people enjoyed my company. And then something happened. You see, there was a uh, event that occurred where I died. The old man died. And this new guy came out that wanted to talk about the Bible and wanted to live the truth and talk about the truth. 
And all of a sudden, people just didn't want to be around me that much anymore. And uh, see, in the past, I was trying to find my life. I wanted to be a motorcycle uh, mechanic and race motocross. And I went through the training and everything to become a mechanic. I have a degree in that. Um, and that didn't work. Then I decided that I would build boats after high school, and I did that for a few years, and uh, that didn't work. Then I got into artistic wood turning, and I sold my work in galleries all across the United States, and uh, that didn't work. <laughs> and then the Lord saved me, and I was born again. And all of a sudden, I started to have this unquenchable desire for the truth. And uh, I remember a, an old friend of mine that I knew since I was a boy, and I he called me up the one time and said, hey, what are you up to? After I'd gotten saved and, and I said, oh, I'm studying the Bible. And he laughed. I thought that was funny. Um, no insult to him or anything. It's because uh, it seemed like a ridiculous thing that I would have been, you know, the guy that he knew would be studying the Bible. It seemed pretty ridiculous to him. And um, you see, I lost my life. My life that I was planning because Jesus Christ came and he purchased me. He died on the cross and the blood that he shed paid for my sins. And um, I was born again. That's why people couldn't relate. So if you're out there today and you just can't fit in and you're saying, I just don't know what the purpose of life is. You're re very close. You're on the doorstep to salvation, friend. And I'm gonna put some videos at the end that explain salvation, go through the scriptures, show you the scriptures. Um, but Jesus, I'll just give it to you basically right here. Um, Jesus Christ is God, holy, completely God. He's not one of three persons, uh, God, the son and some other God title, the Holy Trinity. No, that stuff's not in the Bible. Jesus Christ came down. A body was prepared, the little baby there in the womb of Mary. He was born just like any other baby. He came out, he had to be fed. He had to have his diaper changed, the whole thing. God, who created all of this, and he came down to the earth. The Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Uh, it is a great mystery, but it happened. That's why it's the year 2024 right now. It's dated from the birth of God here on the earth. God manifest in the flesh. God as a being, God the Father, has no birth date, but understand what I'm saying here. The Lord Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. The soul is God the Father, the eternal soul there. And so God manifest in the flesh came down here and um, born of the Virgin Mary. And he came out and he lived for 33 and a half years. And he went into ministry and he healed people and did great things for people and um, preached the truth to the children of Israel. And they didn't like him very much. <laughs> Despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, the Bible says in Isaiah 53. And uh, you see the uh, Jews back there in the first century, they wanted to work with the Romans. They were going into business together and Jesus was coming and he was talking badly about that business and the, the kingdom that they were trying to build. And um, they didn't like that very much. And so they conspired to put Jesus to death. And they went to Pontius Pilate, and Pilate, they kept going back to him and saying, you know, you need to crucify him. And Pilate said, why? What evil hath he done? I find no fault in this man. You know, and he scourged him and said, okay, I'm gonna let him go. No, you can't, you have to crucify him. If you don't crucify him, you're not Caesar's friend. You know, you read the accounts of, the, of what happened there in the four gospels. So Pilate, against his will, he said, okay, I'll crucify him. But I washed my hands of this, this just man, this innocent man, and they put him to death. The Romans and the Jews working together. And if you understand anything about what goes on in world politics and world affairs, it's the Jews and the Roman Catholics that work together. It still goes on to this very day. It's the fifth kingdom that was prophesied in the book of Daniel. I have all the studies to prove this on my channel. Again, once you get saved, you won't be able to understand a lot of this stuff, but they put Jesus to death, nailed him to a cross, Roman crucifixion. Uh, first they scourged him, they whipped him really badly, and then they nailed him to a cross with cruel hatred. And he died on that cross. And the blood that he shed um, 
<clears throat> that blood is there to pay for your sins, your sins and my sins. And you have to believe that by faith. You have to say, I believe what the Bible says. I believe the, the scriptural account of Jesus dying on the cross. And I understand that he died for my sins. I'm a sinner. I'm worthy of going to hell, which the Bible says happens to those who reject Jesus Christ. I'm worthy of that. But I don't want to go there. I want to be part of the coming millennial kingdom and then go on into eternity, into heaven, which is going to be even more beautiful than this. And I want to be part of that. And I know that I can't save myself with my good works. Therefore, I put my faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm not, I can't do good things and go to church every Sunday and whatever to someday earn my salvation. No, that isn't it. And you call upon the Lord, according to Scripture, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. You call upon the Lord and you ask Him to save you. You will be saved by His grace. He has grace for you. That's why He came and died. And you get saved by His grace through your faith. I believe what the Bible says. I believe that that's the scripture is correct and that that can take me to heaven when I die and that he can give me a new life down here. That's the way it works. And then they buried Jesus after he was died on the cross. The body died. The soul and the spirit left. But the body died and they put him in the grave for three days. And then he came up. He didn't stay buried. It's a very interesting thing. You see, um, all the other great leaders of religions out there, you know, Buddha and, and uh, Gandhi and um, Muhammad and all the others, all the popes that have ever lived, um, they all died and they stayed buried. The people go and they visit their graves. There's no grave for Jesus Christ because he's not there. He has risen, like the scripture said. There's a turkey vulture over there flying if you can see that I don't know if you can see it or not but um, people saw him come up from the from the dead over 500 people saw him come up from the dead I have to get back over this way because of the wind and um, for the last 2,000 plus years people have been had their lives changed and it isn't just a thing of well I'm part of religion now and so it makes perfect sense and I have a good church that I go to and whatever. That isn't it. Um, it's, a, it's a whole new life. And the Holy Spirit comes in and He'll show things to you. God will speak to you. And you'll come out here to a place like this and you can just look around and say, wow, Lord, this is a beautiful place. You are amazing in what you've created. I can truly say that. So like I said, I'll put some salvation videos here at the end. And um, you can check those out. But uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And um, feeling alone, being alone is not a bad thing. Um, you can actually get very close to God in a place like this. And uh, being out here away from all the noise and everything of cities and, and just all the stuff out there. <laughs> Um, I'd take this uh, 10,000 times to one over anything that goes on in the city. So, but hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And um, watch the ones at the end. I'll put them here at the end. And uh, we'll see you in upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching.